In this video we're gonna make explosive barrels. First step is to make a new Unity project and choose 3D as your template. Now import the explosive barrels package. You're gonna see an error message. Just choose ignore, it won't affect the project. Now open the red barrel scene from the scenes folder and you're gonna see a charming gathering of monsters around the red barrel. Let's get to the fun part. Make a scripts folder and create two C sharp scripts, enemy and explosive barrel. Now open the barrel prefab and the monster prefab and attach each according script. You don't need to do this for every monster, just do it for one because they're all prefabs. Let's open the explosive barrel script and start coding. To make sure that the explosion works correctly we will make two references. One for the barrel and another one for the explosion object. In the awake function we will make sure that the barrel is active and the explosion is not. In order to make this work we want to copy the explosion object and put it inside the barrel prefab. Now choose the flammable barrel object and drag in graphics into the barrel field and explosion into the explosion field. Once you're done with this let's exit the prefab and delete the explosion object from the scene. Done? Great, now let's write some more code so we can test what we've done so far. Now we will make an explode function that will basically activate the explosion while deactivating the barrel, making it seem like it disappeared after the explosion. Inside the update function I use the input.getKey method in order to check if space is pressed. If it is, the barrel will go boom. Let's test it, and it works. But it's pretty whack at this point, so let's add some sound effects to make it sound more meaty. In order to make this work, we will need an audio source attached to the barrel prefab. Uncheck play on awake and lower the volume to 0.3, so your speakers don't blow up together with the barrel. At this point, I realized that I didn't actually include the sound effect into the asset package. So I went back to freesound.org and downloaded an explosion sound that I found earlier. If you ever need some free sound effects, I recommend you check them out. It's an awesome website and it saved my life on multiple occasions. Now we just need to open the barrel prefab and attach the sound effect to the audio source. Inside our explosive barrel script, we're gonna need a reference to the audio source which we can get in the awake function by using the getComponent method because our object has an audio source attached to it. Now that we have the reference we can just use the play function and we're ready to test what we've done so far. Let's go back to Unity and hit play. Much better with sound. We can start working on making our explosion affect enemies. The first step of this process is making a variable that will act as the range of the explosion. Let's also make it serializable so we can change it from the editor. To visualize this range we will use onDraw gizmos to draw a wire sphere that will take in two arguments. So the first one is the center, which is obviously the position of a barrel, and the second one is the range, which is the range of the explosion. Now when we go back into Unity and change the value of a range to be higher than zero, we will immediately see the wire sphere appear. I highly recommend you use gizmos in situations like these, they will save you a lot of time. Alright, now that this is done, let's work on blowing up the enemies. Open the enemy script and let's delete all the useless code. Also make a public kill enemy function so it can be called from outside scripts. In order to identify all the enemies caught inside the explosion, we will make a new array of colliders called enemies and we will use a function called physics.overlapsphere. So what this basically does is it makes a sphere with a certain radius and returns all the colliders inside of it. So in our case, the center of a sphere is again the position of a barrel, so transform that position and the range of a sphere is equal to the range that we used before. Now we have all the enemies stored inside the array. Let's use a for each loop to process through all the objects and get the enemy script attached to them. Now we can call the kill enemy function on all the enemies at the same time. Now there is a scenario when this code can backfire. Specifically, when we have inside the explosion an object that has a collider but doesn't have an enemy script. To avoid this we can simply check if the game object has an enemy component or not. And we're done with this part. Now to make it all work we need to attach colliders to our monsters. Open the monster prefab, add a box collider component and play around with the size until it looks nice. To see if it works we need some kind of feedback from the enemy script. And the easiest way is to print something inside the kill enemy function. Let's test it out. 
Go back into Unity and hit play. Hit space to cause the explosion. As you can see we got 16 messages, which is equal to the amount of zombies that are in range of the explosion. You can double check if you want to. But this is still pretty boring, so let's add some ragdolls to the enemies and make them fly away after the explosion. In order to make this work, I guided myself after a tutorial made by Ditzel Games. It's a great one. I'll put a link down in the description, go check it out. The first step is to make two references. The first one for the main collider of a monster, which we will call Monster Collider, and the second one will be an array of colliders, which will contain the colliders of each limb. Once you're done with that, let's create an activate ragdoll function that will take in a boolean argument, that we will call status. Also we will need to reference the animator, because we need to disable it in order for the ragdoll to work. But the animator is not attached to the monster object, but rather to its child. So we need to use the get component in children function in order to find it. The next step is making the colliders and the animator turn on and off depending on what boolean we pass it. So, for example, if we say activate ragdoll true, then the main collider of a monster will be turned off, the animator will be turned off, but all the ragdoll colliders will be activated. We also want to influence the gravity of the object depending on the status. Simply because when we turn on the ragdoll of the object, the main collider will be turned off. And with no collider, the object will simply fall through the ground. That's why we want to turn it off. Almost there. Now we need to activate the ragdoll from inside the kill enemy function. And just because we want to launch the monsters into the air, let's add some explosive force to every collider inside the ragdoll. To do this, let's use a for each loop like we've done previously. But this time, we're gonna get the rigid body component on each collider and add an explosion force to it. Something else I wanna do here is add a vector free argument to our kill enemy function. As you will see in a minute, this will allow us to get the exact position where the explosion is coming from, which will make the monsters fly away in the opposite direction. Now let's add all the arguments to our explosion function. The first one is the explosion force, let's set it to 40. The second is the explosion position, which we now get as a parameter. The third one is the explosion radius, let's set this to 1. The fourth one is the upwards modifier, which determines how far up will your objects fly away. And the last one is force mode, which shows how your force is applied to your object. Right now let's set it to force mode.impulse and change it later on if we need to. Now we will have an error inside the explosive barrel script. And that's because we changed the kill enemy function. It now requires a vector free to work. So because our vector free has to be the center of the explosion, we will just pass the position of a barrel. The script is ready. Now we need to create the ragdoll. Open the monster prefab, go to game object, choose 3D and then ragdoll. You will see a window like this that will require you to drag in each respective body part. Once you do that, the create button will become available. You can pause the video here if you want to make sure you get it right. Congrats, our ragdoll is ready. As you can see, it looks a bit janky. That's primarily because our model is not in T-pose, but we can still play around with the sizes of the colliders to make it look a bit better. Feel free to spend as much time as you want on this. I'm gonna leave mine in a state that you currently see on the screen right now. Before we can test, there is one very important thing that we need to do. We need to attach a rigid body to the monster prefab. And we can finally hit play to see the result. <laughs> That's funny, but not what we wanted to do. Let's change the range from 1 to 3 and see if it makes it better. Now this is more like it. One last thing before we finish. Currently, if you hit spacebar multiple times, the explosion will happen every time. To solve this, we can just disable the script after the explosion. Congratulations! Now you know how to make explosions, ragdolls and you know how to combine them. You can use these scripts in order to make any kind of explosions. Grenades, rockets, nuclear bombs, anything you can imagine. I want to thank you for watching and I hope this was at least a bit helpful and entertaining. Let me know if you want to see more tutorials. Let me know how can I make them better. And let me know if you have anything specific that you want to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this was interesting. And if it wasn't, dislike and let me know why in the comment section.